old viticulturist has now passed on, and his heirs have come to collect the fortune of the estate. The estate mainly residing in vines. There's a large plot of a vineyard grapes that these heirs are interested in. And instead of wanting to split up the different portions of land and give some to some and some to another, what he's decided to do was create this type of competition where his, his heirs are going to attempt to compete by creating the best grapes with his plot of land. There are many different types of grapes, and luckily the local vineyards have asked for certain grapes, and you, as one of the heirs, will attempt to gather them and turn them in for prestige. At the end of the growing season, whoever has cultivated the best crop and created the best types of wine will then become the heir apparent, gathering all of the estate and uh, gathering all of the inheritance. Will you become that specific heir? We'll find out in the game Lavina, a game by Devere, plays two to five players, takes roughly about 45 minutes and is for ages eight and up. And in the game, it has a rondelle type system in which you're going to be moving across a plot, gathering grapes, turning them in to different wineries to then make wine, gathering prestige. And you're going to have a certain number of crates. These crates are what you need to turn in to these specific wineries and gathering points from those, as well as, of course, upgrading your baskets that will allow you to carry more grapes of different values. Whoever gathers the most value in grapes will be the winner of the game. And if you are the one to do so, you will win the game. I'll take a look down below and show you what it comes with, how it plays, and we'll come up and I'll give you my review for the game Lavina. Welcome to the game Lavina, currently set up for four players, but it does have a variant for two and plays up to five. In the game, it's rather simple. Based on the number of players, you will be giving players baskets, a character, and you're also going to be giving them uh, barrels or crates here, and prestige based on their playing order. Uh, after you've gone ahead and give every single player their number of barrels, prestige, and baskets, you're also going to set aside the medium and large baskets for players to purchase, a certain number of wineries uh, based on the number of players, and in this case it's going to be seven, with of course this cooperative winery, and you'll set aside the rest of them. You won't be using them for this specific game. Shuffle the wine or grape cards and place them out just as you see here based on the number of spaces provided in the rules based on the number of players. It'll always be two with one on the top and one on the bottom. You're also going to set aside prestige tokens that you're going to gather throughout the game which has increments of one, five, ten, and fifty. A barrels you won't be using and then of course a wild that you'll place at the end of the track meaning the person who gets across the track first will get that specific wild. And every player is going to place their characters out on this area here in order, meaning the person in the last position will go first and the person in the first position will go last, but that player will get more prestige to start the game off, balancing it out. To begin the game, uh, I went ahead and just set up one player here to show you what it looks like to have a character ready to go, as well as, of course, the tools that can be utilized and manipulated throughout the game when you need to utilize them. Go ahead and place your character marker onto any of the spaces on the board. And in this case, there are five with boxes in each of them. And the farthest box on the back end here is the lowest, is the, is the closest to being able to go first next. So you're always gonna to wanna to place your character in either here, 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 if you possibly can. So take the character and then place it. And you can place it as far along this track as you would like. Now, the farther along you place it, the less turns you're gonna get in the round though. So if he places here, his next action is to take either of the two sets of of, uh, grape cards. You can take either the top one here or the top one here. You may not touch the bottom one here, but there are rules that will allow you to do so, such as tools. And then gather one card. And when you gather a card, you can place it in either of these baskets here. And at any point on your turn, you can dump any of your basket's contents into another basket, so don't forget to do that. You're also able on your turn after moving from this position to this position on your next turn to gather either from the current space you're on or the next space you go to. So Turn one, move, and gather, and place. Note too that your baskets have a certain number of cards they can have in them, and in this case here, this one has three, and this one here has two. After you have moved and gathered, your turn is over, the next player will get a chance to go, and they can once again choose any of these spaces and place on a box, so maybe they'll choose that space there. Then gather a card and place it on one of their baskets out of the game, as you can see. Uh, then, of course, the next player will get a chance to go, maybe placing here and taking this one here. And then finally, this player will come over here and take this one here. Then it'll be back to Red's turn. And now Red is the person who's going to go next because he's the farthest along. Had uh, 
that yellow went here and red moved here, the next person would be yellow. But because that's not the case, the next player is going to be blue. You could never move on the same space that you're currently on. So if you're here, you can't simply go to the next box in the same space. You have to actually move to a new space. And because these two are blocked, meaning you can only have one of each of these meeples in each of these boxes, you have to move to a farther adjacent space. So you can choose this space here with this box, or of course this one here, or this one over here. And he'll just go and simply move to this one here. And once again, gather another grape and put it into a basket. And that will continue up until the point in which a player or their meeple reaches the end of the line here. When they get to the end of the line, they're gonna gather this wild. If there is one there, they'll put it on their player board. And then they're going to have a couple options. The first one is they can choose to turn in one or two baskets to place barrels down on these wineries. So for instance, if this player here were to have gathered uh, 13 points or more of Chardonnay, which is more than any other wines that he has in that basket, as long as he has 13 points, he can put one of his barrels, one of these guys here, onto one of these spaces, thusly gaining the prestige needed. Um, or he could choose to do something where it's just Chardonnay, and he'll gather one times the number of points he has on the cards, points being the numbers presented here, uh, and so on and so forth. Each of these wineries will either require a specific type of wine, or it will require multiple different wines is okay, as long as there's one that is greater than the rest of them. So for this one, Chardonnay, this one here is a good example. Chardonnay has to be more than all the rest of the wines, but you can use all the wines as long as you get 13 points or more when turning into this specific winery. This one over here says you need Pinot Noir. However, you, it's the only one you can have and you need five points or more and you'll get 11 prestige when you turn in those wine into the space. And like I said, he can go ahead and do that for up to two of these provided he has the required grapes from his baskets to place them on here. After that, he can also choose to upgrade his baskets. He'll have to pay the prestige from the basket he's choosing to upgrade to the next basket. So if he wanted to upgrade this small basket to a medium one, this is five and this is eight. He'll have to pay a total of three prestige in order to switch this one out with this one. When you switch, discard the previous basket and it is removed from the game. You can, however, switch from a small to a large or a medium to a large if you'd like in any combination, as long as you're willing to pay the difference in the baskets. And then everybody else will do the same thing as well. When they reach the end here, they can go ahead and choose to uh, turn their baskets in for these wineries as well as upgrade their baskets. And then these guys are all going to come back in the order in which they were they, they came out. So if the blue player was the first one to come out, he is the one who's going to start. And then let's say that red went next and then finally green and then finally and then lastly yellow. Uh, blue is going to go next in the next round. You'll take out another one of these wild cards or wild grapes, placing it here. They're then going to go ahead and get the deck of grape cards and place them out to fill in all the spaces that were previously removed from the last round. And then you're going to once again begin the next round of play. You'll also do something that's pretty interesting too. You'll take any of these uh, wineries that have at least one barrel space open and you will place a prestige on them, meaning that whenever somebody turns into one of these locations, locations here, they're going to get that prestige along with the prestige for turning in the, the specific grapes. And it's going to keep going like that until all of the barrels you have are placed out onto these boards here and you have acquired the prestige for placing them out. Once that happens, everyone else will get to finish that round completely, and then you will tally up your points, and whoever has the most is the winner. Another thing to note, too, is there is a special cooperative winery, which will let you turn in any type of wine at any number, but it's only going to give you times 0.5 for the total amount. So, for instance, if this player over here had, I don't know, let's say he had all three of these grapes, they're all three different types, that doesn't matter, two, four, and six, he could turn all three of these in once he reaches the end here. He's going to go ahead and then take one of his barrels and place it on this space here, and he's going to collect three points. So six divided by two is three, so we get three prestige for doing so. That's one unique way that you can turn in your barrels. It's the le least efficient way, but it is one way that you can do so if you need to, uh, because maybe your basket's full of a bunch of uh, grapes that you do not need. And that's it. Uh, there's one other little thing too, I guess, which is this here and uh, these guys here. This is a wine, uh, 
or a grape, I should say, of any type, but it only gives you one point for it, and it doesn't count as part of your card count. So, for instance, if you had five Peanut Noir required, but you only had four, you could turn this in with those three cards or two cards, and then you would be able to place a barrel on here. These here are going to be items, and based on the number of players, how many you'll, you'll be able to start in the pool with. But when you gather cards, so for instance, if this player were to gather this card here, and it has a boot on it, uh, that player is going to get a boot token. You can hold a total of two different items, and you can use them in combination if you would like. Uh, the cards will either let you gather things from spaces uh, behind them, they'll let you gather more than one card, or let you gather cards that are underneath other cards. And if you have something like, I don't know, boots and shears, you could gather, uh, if, you, if your character was over here and you used a boot and a shear, boot says you can gather these as opposed to these, and shear says you can gather two. You can, in fact, take two cards from a space you normally couldn't and place them into one of their bas your baskets. So tools are very useful in the game. Uh, that's it, though. After everybody has gathered uh, as much as they possibly can when somebody's finished placing all of their barrels out you'll tally up all your prestige points and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game lavina so Lavina functions much like the game Takedo, in which you are moving from one side of the board to another side. You're always going to be taking your action if you are the person in the farthest position, moving forward, gathering grapes, placing them into your baskets, and eventually turning in your grapes to wineries to score prestige. The wineries only want certain types of grapes and a certain number or value of those grapes. If you do not have them, you cannot turn them in. You can move your grapes from one basket to another. You can utilize tools that will allow you to gain certain grapes you normally couldn't in certain spaces you normally couldn't as well. You're also able to gather grapes and move or move and gather grapes unless you're in the position outside of the specific track of the game. You are basically attempting to specifically gather the cards you need in order to successfully turn them in. However, everyone else wants to do the same thing, and there's only a certain number of wineries out there and a certain number of barrel spaces or prestige areas that you can gather those points in. If you do not gather the grapes you need to or you gather them too late, there may not be a position for you in order to turn them in. And that's going to cost you because you might actually have to end up dumping out certain types of grapes if you do not meet the requirements by the time you leave the board. Now, of course, wilds are useful if you get out first, you'll gather that little wild chip, which will give you one of any value. And of course, if you can't turn them in or don't want to, you can simply keep them and store them. You don't have to turn them in. You can turn in just one winery. You can do both of them if you're able to. And that's going to be based on the number of players as to whether or not you can do that, as well as based on how other players chose to play. The more turns you get in the game, the better. But not always, because sometimes you might only need one specific card in a round that might benefit you enough to turning it in and successfully winning you the game. You also only have a certain number of barrels. Once you've turned in all seven, everyone else will finish the round out, and then you're going to tally up your points. Hopefully your points are more than any other players, based on the wineries you chose and the grapes you gave them. If nothing else, you can always turn them into the cooperative. If you goof or if somebody takes your position, you can turn your points into at least get half of the value of your points from the cooperative, but even that is limited. Utilizing spaces, utilizing the amount of turns you get, and your tools is going to master this game. You you need to make sure you make the best, most beneficial spaces uh, you could possibly uh, hit every single turn. And if you do not, you are going to suffer because of it. You should also be aware of what types of grapes are in your opponent's baskets, because if you're not aware, you're not going to realize that they're going for the same objective you are. And if they get out first, they'll turn theirs in, and you might have a spot in order to gain prestige needed for you to win the game, setting you back quite a ways. Be very wary and very careful in this game as you choose the spaces that you do. Some grapes actually do not even give you any specific points. So, for instance, this one here doesn't actually have a value or a type of grape, it's just going to be a vine, but it does give you a tool, and those tools are so useful, my favorite being the shears, because they allow you to collect extra unique uh, uh, grapes that you can utilize into your baskets, and that can set you apart. Even just a one or turn, a two turn difference in this game can benefit you greatly. If you like games like Takedo, if you like the Rondell system, if you like uh, games like Glen, uh, uh, what was it, Glendale? Uh, in Glendale Chronicles, you're going to also like this game as well. There's also one called uh, Fairy Tale, I believe, that does the same type of movement. Um, and if you enjoy trying to manipulate the spaces to the best of your benefit, you're going to enjoy this as well. It's a deep thinker, it's a light game, and it's also something that's fairly easy to understand once you get underway. There's a lot of stuff going on, but in reality, all you're doing is moving, collecting, and then, of course, when you get across the board, turning in and rinsing and repeat. The 
around up until somebody gets rid of all the barrels and the game ends. The quality of the game is nice. This is a small box game. It comes with cards. It comes with some boards. And the boards are going to be based on the number of players as to how many you use and what spaces you use. You have the meeples representing your little winery characters, which are also not their, their, their own unique custom sizes. You've got your barrels and chits. All of them are high quality. The artwork is beautiful. If you like viticulture, if you like any type of um, wine style, wine themes, or or even just um, the idea of, of making your own wine, this is going to be a very interesting game. It's something that you might want to take a look at. If you like a game with some deep thought and your choices making a big difference, games that usually come down really close to the wire because everybody has a really close point total at the end of the game, it's also something I would highly suggest. It fits in a small box and has a big punch and plays from two to five players, which is really, really great. For those of you who are looking for something a little lighter than this, this is probably not going to be your bag. If some of you guys who do not like the idea of people being able to take the grapes that you need and turn them in before you can, it has that aggressive nature in it. Even though it isn't uh, in appearance very aggressive, it can be. You can lose that on certain positions and it can cost you quite a bit. Uh, so those are the things that I would take into consideration. Another thing I would consider is in the two-player variant of the game, it's my least favorite of playing the number of players in this game. I prefer playing this at four, even five players, because in a two-player game, you get those two meeples and you kind of go back and forth. It feels like you're playing a four-player game, but with one player board and with double the meeples. And so you will eventually move one of your meeples out and turn those in, and then it's your opponent will do the same thing, and then you will do it again. And you're trying to try and manipulate the board to where you can get at least two or even 30 turn-ins. And uh, going first makes a big difference. And and I don't know if the value is 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 on par um, with going second as far as getting the extra little prestige points. And of course, there is a bit of randomization as far as what cards come out when, what cards you're going to gather. Obviously, a four red is going to be better than a two blue, especially if there's only one blue uh, valued uh, winery in play. That can happen as well. But there is a large uh, variety of styles that the game is going to come with. There's a bunch of different wineries as you play every single game. That will change. Maybe it gives you double points or 15 or 10. And so you have a lot of options and choice. Each game is going to feel very different. Overall, I had a lot of fun playing this game. I love the style of mechanic where you're trying to decide what position is the best position and is it worth taking a lower card to move farther ahead next time and gain that extra turn? Or is it better to just gather the best card that you need at the cost of maybe losing a turn in the entire round? A really, really cool concept. If you haven't played a game like this, this is one I would suggest playing because it's very simple and very straightforward. And if you have have, I would consider taking a look at this, checking out the mechanics, and thinking for yourself if it's something you'd like to pick up. It's going to stay in my collection because this is a game I'm going to bring out whenever I want to show somebody one of these uh, Rondell-style systems. Very easy to teach, and then I can get them into something a little, a little more with a little more oomph to it. Overall, though, a solid game, Lavina by Devere. Take a look down below in the description if you're interested in picking up this uh, viticulturist winemaking-style game. Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review of the game Lavina by DeVere. If you're interested in taking a look, like I said, links down below in the description. Also, take a look at my wife's game, Moonshell, a mermaid game, coming out March 2nd. The link is in the description for the Kickstarter notification page and the website where you can get notified to see the game. It is an abstract style puzzle game in which you're basically playing as a mermaid, gathering shells from a tide pool, placing them on rocks, and then getting them from the rocks into your treasure chest, come making combinations of shells and attempt to solve personal and open objectives, getting the most points at the end of the game. It's beautiful and has a rotating board with some unique little features there. Also, the website unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to also go ahead and take a look at our Discord. Thank you, Patreon members, for supporting us. We sent in you know, some mermaid swag and whatnot. If you're interested and still haven't gotten some here on Patreon or on the Discord, you can hit us up and we'll make sure to send you a moonshell pin. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to creating some wine with you next time.